Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome, YouTube. Welcome, Twitter. And to all those who are watching now and who will watch in the future. Um, thanks, everybody, for joining tonight. Um, um, Brother Odane and my wife, um, Sister Keisha from Restores the Truth Ministries. And here to bring uh, teaching part three in the spiritual warfare series. Not sure if you watch the other two parts, but definitely go to the YouTube channel. You'll see um, part one of the spiritual warfare series, um, basically be engaging in the battle. Part two has to do with witchcraft. And now this is part three, which is about the fight against lust. You know, first things first, definitely subscribe to the YouTube channel, you know, like and share this video so we can get out there. Other people can also, you know, listen to it. And also, if you ever are led to support this ministry, these are the different ways you can, you know, through Cash App, PayPal, Zelle. You know, these are ways you can support this ministry um, as you are led. But nevertheless, we thank you for joining, you know, and I pray that, you know, what is taught here, that you take it to heart because it'll help you to overcome this battle. And we know that, you know, lust, especially sexual lust, is something that, you know, many Christians deal with, you know, especially, you know, men, but also women, but especially men, you know, in society, how things are set up, you know, they cause women to dress a certain way to attract men, you know, and throughout this Bible, we see a lot of stories where, you know, great men of God have fallen because of lust, you know, um, examples, you know, is David, what he committed, you know, with Bathsheba, you know, you got Samson, you know, who was very strong, but, you know, women brought him down. You know, but we're going to get into that as well. But it goes to show you that, you know, that strategy the enemy has been using for a very long time, you know, because it works. And that's why it's highly important that we actually overcome this, you know, this, this, this sexual lust, sexual perversion that's being perpetuated throughout society. You know, it's, it's dangerous. It can really bring you down, you know. And another thing I want to mention is, you know, God has called you. You have a calling on your life. If you're still dealing with that, you know, God cannot use you to the capacity that he desires to use you if you have that in your life. Amen. You know, if you're dealing with masturbation, pornography, fornication, harlotry, whatever it is, that has to be put away. That has to be put away, you know, if God is going to elevate you and use you further. So we're going to get into all this. Definitely, you know, stick around. You're going to learn things here, you know, you want to say. No, no. All right. So first things first, you know, just want to give you an exhortation. As it tells us in first Peter chapter two, verse 11. Right. Which I'm going to read. It says. But beloved, I beg you. Right. As sojourners and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. All right. That's that's key in there. That's key. There's a war going on within. All right. Lust, your fleshly lust. Lust just means desire. All right. And it's warring against your soul. All right. Remember, Paul talked about the desires of the flesh is contrary to the desires of the spirit. All right. Those are the passions, the lust of this flesh. But we're going to mostly focus on, you know, the sexual lust. We're going to mostly focus on that. Lust just means desire. But we're going to more focus on the, the, the sexual lust, how it's perverted in society. And it's important that we subject that, all right? And we live holy and obedient according to the word of God, all right? Now, we're going to go into this story back in Genesis, you see. As we read Genesis throughout our lives, you know, you know we read it like, okay, yeah, they ate from the fruit of the tree, tree of knowledge of good and evil, man fell, sin came into the world. But we have to understand, as you, as you grow in the Lord and the Lord begins to enlighten your understanding, right? You're going to understand that Genesis has a lot of depth into it, a lot of meat, that it's a parable that is actually signifying a lot of things. It's actually showing us something deeper beyond the surface. It's symbolic. Symbolic. Yes. Thank you. Symbolic. Right. There's something deep behind the surface that we have to pay attention to. So we're going to turn there real quick. I'm going to also share my screen. Genesis chapter three. We're just going to read verses one through seven. I'm going to share my screen that way. You know, everybody can follow along. We can look into this. All right. All right. I'm getting it up right now. 
waiting. So hopefully everybody can see this screen. All right, here we go. Genesis chapter three. I'm going to be reading from verses one through seven. And it reads. Now the serpent was more where God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree desirable to make one wise, she took of his fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. All right. All right. So, you know, if you all followed along, everybody, you know, if you read the Bible, we're all familiar with, you know, that story. Of Genesis, all right, about the serpent, right? Tempting, first tempting the woman, all right, to eat of the tree which God commanded them not to eat of, you know, and then she did it and then she gave it to her husband. All right. If you notice the key passages in that in that um that scripture, it says, This is what I want us to focus on, right? Verse six. So when the woman saw the tree was good for food. That's one, right? That it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise. She took and she ate of it. Those are key. That's key. That is key. Now, now listen, I'm going to read verse, chapter 2, um, verses 15 and 16, all right? It says, do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him, all right? Now listen, for all that is, is in the world, the lust of the flesh. You see that? The lust of the eyes. You see that? And the pride of life is not from the Father, but it's from the world. All right? Lust. That serpent represents, right, the lust that's lurking. All right? Usually in your passions. All right? It's always tempting you, tempting you, right, to do something that's contrary to the spirit. All right? That's what it signifies. All right? That lust that's lurking. And in the key of the key passage I wanted to see is that when she said that it was good for food. All right? Representing satisfy your own flesh, flesh yes. all right? Satisfying your own flesh. When Jesus was in the wilderness and he fasted, that's why we always mention about fasting. You know, if you're not fasting, you, you ain't going to grow. You're not going to be able to kill that flesh. What did the, the, the devil tempt him with first? The first temptation was food, all right? It said he was hungry and he tempted him to go turn the stones into bread and eat it. But he, he didn't listen to that. All right. You didn't listen to that. There is a strong connection, right, with food, eating a lot of food and your sexual passions. Mm -hmm. All right. There is. If you have ever fasted before, if you have ever fasted before, you will notice that when you're fasting, a lot of the flesh, it it dies. All right. It, it, it's like the passions, they don't rise up. Right. They don't rise up. Right. And as you feed your, yourself with the word of God, you feel your spirit gets stronger. Right. But if you ever begin to overindulge in eating, just eating food, you're going to feel the, your, your passion just being stirred up. Thoughts come into your mind. There's a, there's a connection with that. There's a, there's a connection with that. That is why we always, always encourage people, listen, you want to overcome these sexual lusts, you got to fast. You have to fast in order to break that. All right. I want us to get to see how that serpent, that lust, always tempting you, whether through your eyes, something may look good. Mm -hmm. The lust of the eyes, it may look good. Doesn't mean it's good. Amen. You see? Doesn't mean it's good. You know, you look at these things in the world. They look pleasant. They look pleasurable. You look at a beautiful woman or, or a handsome young man. All right? You don't know what's behind that. Amen. You don't know what disease they're carrying. Amen. All right? Amen. We have to watch that. There's, that's what the serpent does. Presents something that looks good but it's not good for you all right praise god that's key that's key let's go to first corinthians right because 
it's important, right, that we have to definitely, you know, watch ourselves six. And I'm going to read from verses 12 through 20. All right. Let's follow along. Praise God. Let's follow along. Praise God. Afternoon, Destiny. Andy, thanks for joining. All right. So 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 12. I'm starting that, right? And it reads, right? All things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All right. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Now, that's key. That's key. There are certain things that's lawful, but you should not allow yourself to be subjected to them. All right. Okay. Like food, eat food in moderation, but that's the food hasn't shouldn't be your master where you become gluttonous. All right. Verse 13, foods for the stomach and the stomach for food, but God will destroy both of it and them. Now, listen, now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. All right. This is key because of what was going on in the church, sexual morality. Our sexual lust should not be driving us from here to there. Woman to woman, men to men, men, women to men, men to women, whatever. And definitely not, you know, homosexuality or lesbian. That's that's definitely against God, you know, but also fornication against God. All right. But control ourselves. All right. And now in these times, because we have media, you know, they didn't have that back then. People are watching pornography. All right. That's prevalent. I think they say like 70 to 80 percent of the internet is just it's just it is pornography yes. or something mm -hmm. like that you know yeah it's everywhere everywhere to pleasure your eyes it looks good guard your eyes you know this is why we have to learn to control our body this is why we have to submit ourselves to god and our temptation this is why we have to incorporate fasting you know because without that you're not going to overcome this enemy. And as I mentioned earlier, this enemy, you know, sexual lust is prevalent, is strong in society and women, but especially in the men, especially in men. It's strong. I've dealt with it. Mm -hmm. I've dealt with it. And the days are come, I'm going to put out my testimony of how God delivered me from lust. All right. I, I have a testimony on the YouTube channel about how God delivered me from the from pornography, definitely go watch it. You know, I'm gonna definitely put out how God delivered me from lust, you know, masturbation because it's prevalent, man. It's serious. Amen. And I just want to touch on uh Genesis. Me and my husband and I were talking the other day, and I was saying that uh Genesis is very, very symbolic. Do we know that it was an actual fruit that the enemy tempted her and introduced uh Eve to? It that could have been symbolic because after they ate of it. They knew that they were naked. So it could have had to do something with some type of uh, perversion. Yeah. The Bible talks about us um, being trees. You know, it says that a tree bears good fruit. A bad tree bears bad fruit. So, you know, God told them they can eat of any tree except for the um, tree of um, knowledge, good, knowledge yeah, good and evil. So that could, that could be, you know, out of an allegory it could be symbolic that's what i was saying to my husband mm -hmm. but it's, it's still if you look at it how the enemy does um you know you see men you know especially on men is being pushed so much um you know lust oh look you know with your eyes and you know women too you know everything is like you know you have to pledge you have to take into that pleasure because it looks good to the eyes like my husband said no you don't know what's behind it you don't know what that person has you don't know the history of that person anything but that's the a lie to the enemy it looks good so you have to have it yep. you know and that's one of his traps as well you don't know what's going to come with all of that you yes know? just going after things that look good to your eyes you you can't you can't that's why the bible tells us you know the, the um lust of the flesh the um, lust of the eyes and the pride of life you know, we have to just have self-control. And that only comes by fasting, praying, mm -hmm. fasting. Yes. <laughs> Destiny, write that down. Yes. Yes. <laughs> How many times I say fasting? Yes. But prayer and fasting and just like really, really having that close relationship with God. Because we're going to be judged by, you know, every work, everything that we do in this body, you know, every word, idle word, whatever. So you, you have to be on point when it comes to. Um, bringing our flesh under subjection. Yes. And I like, um, Briscoe, kind of what you just said. You see what it is doing to the youth. Yes, yes. that is the, the whole strategy. That is how, th you know, that's why people, they, they're, um, 
entangled or trapped in pornography for many years is because it started when they were young yes. or it can even start through molestation, you know? That's the whole strategy, you know? Get them while they're young, you know, engage in fornication, pornography, masturbation, and then they're hooked on it for many years, you know, many years, it's an addiction, many years, and, and people may not even realize it's addiction, you know? Being transparent, I know because that happened with me. I got involved in pornography when I was young, um, like preteen, you know, before teens, you're watching certain shows on HBO, mm -hmm. things like that, you know? That's the whole strategy. And it's it, it's not easy to get out of, you know? So, yeah. Because those, you know, and then that that, that controls your flesh. Like, it, it builds this strong desire. You see these images, and then you build up this fantasy in your mind. Pornography is definitely, definitely demonic. You know, it has so many people in bondage to it because it puts these imprints in the mind. Like, you yes. can watch a, a porn... Uh, film and then like months down you still remember that scene yes. whatever scene you like yes. because it, it it does something to the mind that's why the bible tells us we have to be renewed in our mind and that's only the spirit yes. you know yes you know it's 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 very you know it's very serious and as i mentioned um especially if god has a calling on your life you have a calling on your life the enemy he uses that yes we're gonna get to these stories man we're gonna get into these stories it's gonna get through these um these scriptures. Um, next one, First Thessalonians chapter four. You want to read that? What is it? Uh, hold on. Yep. Do you have First yeah. Thessalonians chapter four? Yep. Verses three through five. All right. Okay, and it says, "For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor." not in passions of lust like the gentiles who do not know god all right that's powerful that, that's clear learning how to possess your, your 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 vessel this temple of the living god the holy spirit dwelling in you this is the temple of the living god knowing, learn, knowing how to possess it in, in holiness and honor is key to being sanctified all right verse three this is the will of god what's god's will your sanctification god wants you to be sanctified that you should abstain from sexual morality Continue to engaging in sexual morality, sexual sin. It's going to hinder that process. It's going to hinder it because you're defiling the temple. You're obeying, defiling, obeying, defiling. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like going forward, backwards. You know, that's why God wants you to abstain. Stop doing that. You know, like I said, the, the devil uses that. You know, that's why, you know, everywhere you see in the society is something sexual in nature, something magazines, TV, computers. Um, what you got now? The um the phones, the smartphones, mm -hmm. it's so easy. You go on TikTok, um, Facebook, YouTube. What do you see? You know, people just, you know, especially you know, mostly women posting their bodies. Why? Yes. To cause the men to fall. Yes. It's it's prevalent, it's man. Serious. It's serious. It's it's serious, you know. And you know, I want to touch on another lie of the enemy. People that's caught up in these bondages of, you know, sexual addiction, sexual morality, you can break free. Now, before I came to Christ, you know, yes, I, I loved sex. Same thing. I had, you know, battle with lust. Before I met my husband, I was celibate for five years. Only by the grace of God, you know, only by his Holy Spirit. When you get tired and when you fully surrender Christ and you desire his ways, you can you can give it up easy it's so easy but the enemy puts it like oh no you like it you have to have this it's a lie it's a trap if i can do it i know you know other people can and i'm just saying from my personal testimony you know i was celibate for five years before i met my husband didn't date didn't play around just waited on god let god work struggling with i just i just had my time with god he can do it for me. He can do it for anyone. Don't let the enemy lie to you and say that you can never break from this. It feels good to you. You have to have, have it, you know. No, you don't. You That's don't. Right. If you want to be set free, fully surrender yourself to Christ. And I'm not just saying, you know, read these scriptures. That's this and that. No, put it fast, pray, go through deliverance. That's I did right. it. You know, I can, you know, I can attest to it. Anybody that, you know, um, sex, you know, addiction to it, whatever, you can be free from it. That's right. That's right. You know, so what what is it that we should do? You know, there's a scripture in the Bible. I'm going to tie it into the scripture. Mm -hmm. I'm showing it where it says um, flee sexual morality. Mm -hmm. All right. 
But we're going to go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, right? I'm going to read from verses 22 what this says, right? This says, flee also youthful lust. Flee, run from it. But pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call out of a pure heart, right? It's telling us to flee mm -hmm. youthful lust. Right? Um, so now I'm also going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18, right? I just want to tie this in because I want to show you all something, right? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. Flee sexual morality. You see that? Every sin that a man does is outside the body. But he who commits sexual morality sins against his own body. All right? Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you're not your own? For you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. All right. So why do I bring up these scriptures? Those scriptures both say flee. When it comes to sexual morality, right, casting down thoughts, resisting is one thing. But the Bible saying you flee. Get away from get it. Get out of those situations. Get out. Thank you. Get out of those Don't situations. Don't put yourself in those situations Don't. thinking you're strong. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it says to run. Run. Yes. Run. You you pour an on the computer. You'll close that. Close put that down. away. Yes. Walk away. Um, you with a nice, beautiful woman. You feel like you might get tempted to end up doing something. Hey, I gotta go. We'll talk tomorrow. You feel the passion start for you. Hey, yo, we'll talk tomorrow. Yo. I gotta go. Flee. Or it says. Sister, or, you, or sister. Or sister with a company with a man yep that's right hey you we gotta, gotta go, go. Right. And, that, and i want to touch on that too yep. if you're married or dating for marriage you should have boundaries okay have boundaries with dealing with the opposite sex right and i'm gonna give you um a, a example guy on my job right even though i'm married he knows i'm married you know he has a lust spirit that's why i'm bringing this up he has a lust spirit very bad lust spirit he doesn't care, you know, and I told my husband, just because we're married, that's not going to stop people from trying because people in their twisted mentality, they love a challenge. Right. So I shut it down. Like before I would speak to him, you know, whole conversation. But when he overstepped that boundary of being disrespectful, knowing that I'm a married woman, I had to just, you know, now he may get a high if that, you know, he may get a hello. But now I just keep the boundaries because a lot of times people would test you to see how far they can go with you when you're married or when you date, like you're in a serious relationship. People don't respect that nowadays. If they're dealing with a spirit of lust, they just want what they want that's and right. that's it at any cost. But you as a woman, a man of God, you have to make sure you have those clear boundaries not to go there because people are not going to respect your relationship or your marriage at all. You have to make sure you hone it down. My husband and I have that understanding. Like when it comes to the opposite sex, we we, we make clear boundaries because you don't want to put yourself in a position. Like he said, flee. Mm -hmm. Keep yourself. God is saying, keep yourself out of those situations. You're not that strong. Mm -hmm. You invite people over, you know, for to watch a movie, have dinner, whatever. You shouldn't be alone. Mm -hmm. Be in a, a group with other believers. Be, you know, elders or whatever like that. Don't be in a um, situation where you know you're going to get tempted, especially if it has been a long time. Mm -hmm. That's just wisdom. So keep boundaries when it comes to dealing with the opposite sex. Yes. Yes. Don't put yourself in that no. situation. Yes. Uh, get yourself. That's right. Um, who was that? Andy? Yes. Yeah. Pray and pray and it will set you free. Yes. yes. Yep. And yes, that is true. Sometimes, yo, Andy, they try to sneak that stuff in. Yeah, they do. They try to sneak in these ads, yeah. man. The enemy is cunning man you're yeah. watching a spiritual movie movie about god they'll still sneak in something yeah man. they'll sneak in something yes yeah. and i was also saying to my husband the other day you know how they they sexualize some food commercials you know somebody closing their eyes biting into a sandwich or a burger like that's why i always say like it's really tied to like that's why god say fast because that's how you're going to overcome lust because food I think it's tied to the same desire as sexual passion. I really do. Yeah. Because when, the more you fast and it, it does something to like give you that balance as far as like in your uh, uh, emotions and passions with that, yes. you know, it kills it for those who are struggling with it. But, you know, it, it gives you a balance to not lust is never satisfied. Yes. Never. It's like a, a, a never ending pit It's never satisfied. So, yeah, definitely um, fast and stuff like that. That's an important thing prayer and fasting you have to do it to overcome this yes all right let's look at a uh an individual who's a good example at you know fleeing 
you know, sexual morality. Let's go to Genesis 39, which is about Joseph, all right? A godly man, you know, he stood his ground. He, he lived, he wanted to live for God, please for God, he made yes. chast, all right? Let's go to Genesis chapter 39. And, all right. And I'm gonna start from, let me see. What verse? Verses, all right. So I'm going to share my screen real quick so everybody can see this and I'll follow along. All right, let's, let's pop up. Okay, here we go. Genesis 39, start verse 2. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered and lived in the house of the Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household and he entrusted to his care everything he owned. From the time he put him in charge of his household and all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care. With Joseph in charge, he did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. So you see, when God prospers you and give you favor, it's all good. Best believe the devil going to come yes. to try and tempt you so you can sabotage that, so yes. you can mess that up, Amen. all right? Yep. So you got to be on guard. Now, let's listen now. Now, Joseph was well-built and handsome, and after a while, his master's wife took notice of Joseph. This is this this right here is the temptation. The, the, his master, Potiphar, left, and is now Joseph there and the master's wife. <laughs> Somebody else is in his house <laughs> with his wife. Yes. All right. But if this was some ungodly man and she <laughs> said, come back with me, come on, this has been a done story. The Potiphar would never knew nothing. All right. But this is a man of God yes. here right now. This is how real we, true man of real, God. Real true man yes. of God. And Joseph not even Joseph not married. You're not married, you know. All right, probably have nothing for a while. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He chats. I'm being realistic. He have nothing. You know, yeah. him and him and his woman is here. Somebody's wife, right? But it shows you. And it, he was good looking. And he could have used his good looks to, for that advantage. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It shows you his morals. Yeah. He stand on spiritual spiritual principles. We are gonna finish this, right? But I'm, I'm I'm trying to get everybody to understand, right? The sexual lust. And how important it is that we have to stand on the word of God. As I just yes. said, this was a worldly, ungodly person. So when that looked good, you, the guy left him there with his wife. And he bounced, going overseas, whatever. Whatever we got to do. And ungodly man there, come on, man. Something else is going down in that. But this is Joseph we're talking about. All right? Verse 8. But he refused. With me in charge, he told her, my master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns. He has entrusted to my care. No one is greater in this house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except you because you are his wife. How then could I do such a wicked thing and, and sin against God? God? Amen. That's called the fear of God. Accountability to God. That's called the All right, so I'm going to continue. We may have cut yeah. out. We may have cut the out. A bit. Yeah, yeah. So we're continuing with Joseph, um, 39. So, so he said, "How can I do this thing and sin against God?" That's verse nine, verse ten. And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. One day he went into the house to attend to his duties, and none of the household servants were inside. She caught him by his cloak and said, "Come to bed with me." But he left his cloak in her hand and ran off his house. He fled. Flee from sexual morality. Yes. He ran. He got out of there. You know why? Because she touched him. She touched him. A whoop touched him. It's like, no, I'm out. Yes. He, he got out of there. All right. He got out of there. All right. But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of his house. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stop right there. Right. 
But this goes to show you why it's important to flee these things, flee sexuality, right? I'm pretty sure his passions were getting stirred up, especially, you know, as a man, especially when she touched him, all right? He had to get out of there. Why? Because he feared God. He yes. knew that's, a, that's that's the key. That's that's wrong to do. That's you adultery. If you don't have yeah. the real fear of God. And we also want to touch on an unbeliever. It doesn't mean someone not necessarily saved. It means a person is not walking with God. So if a person is not, um, you know, fully committed to God, they could have fell too. Yes. A lot of people in church, they fall into sexual sin because yes. they don't have that fear of God. That's right. And I, I'm glad that they put that in that verse, that he reverenced God. Yes. When you have that accountability to God, you're not going to be out here wild and just doing what you want to do, sleeping around. That's right. An unbeliever means anybody that does not walk with God, That's meaning right. that you're not, what's in this yeah. word? You're not really exercising, That's not right. really applying it to your life. Mm -hmm. Even though you may profess Jesus. Yes, yes, <laughs> no yes, yes. Yep. If you're not applying it, you can still get caught up. Yes, yes. And yep. touch, you know, she she did that on purpose. Touch is, you know, to a lot of people that that's, hey, it's on. You touch that's me, right. I feel, I feel good. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Um, Destiny. That it is. Yes. That's too. That yes. yes. That that that's that's um that's um what you said. That's a a hidden spiritual mystery. Yes. Because at that's times. True. When um the enemy, especially when he tries to get you to sleep in the daytime, right? He be coming with stuff. You know, it's happened to me. So I know exactly what you're tying to. Yes, it is. It's yes, one it of is. his one of his strategies. strategies. Yes, it yeah. is. That's wisdom, destiny. Yes. For real. Yep. Yep. So definitely, you know, that's a this is a great story about Joseph, man. Like it's an example, you know, to run away from those things. Yes. Run away. All right. So now let's look at. Let's look at um another story from who's a he was a strong man of God, but he didn't run like Joseph did. <laughs> so and um he he faced consequences. So it's good we're having these two stories because yeah, yeah. we we get to see one Joseph who ran from this, right? And if you read Joseph, you know what well, his story, right? But now we're gonna see another man who actually didn't run, all right. So we're going to go to Judges chapter 16, and this is about Samson, all right? And you can read this. Uh, let me see. 16 verse. We're going to read from verses 1 um, to 4. 1 to 4? Yep. We're gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, continue after that. So I'm going to share my screen, everyone. We're coming from um, Judges 16, verses 1. to four. All right. All right. So. All right. All right. Yep. Oh, it's on. oh let me share my screen real quick. Yes. Yeah, I got to cut out. All right, everybody. Here we go. Judges 16. Share this real quick. All right. Yep. You can start. Samson and Delilah. Now Samson went to Gaza and saw a harlot there and went into her. When the Gazites were told, Samson, come here. Samson has come here. They surrounded the place and lay in wait for him all night at the gate of the city. They were quiet all night, saying, in the morning, with his daylight, we will kill him. And Samson lay low till midnight. Then he arose at midnight, took hold of the doors of the gate of the city and two gate posts, pulled them up, bar and all, put them on his shoulders and carried them to the top of the hill that faces Hebron. Afterward, it happened that he loved the woman in the Valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. All right. All right. We're going to pause right there real quick. All right. If you're following along, if you notice a verse one, it says he went to Gaza where he saw a prostitute. He went and spent the night with her. Samson is already on a path of decline. All right. He slept with a prostitute. He's led by his lust, the sexual passion, lust. All right. Right now, he's on a, a, a path of declining. He's going the wrong direction now, all right? And then, eventually, he encounters another woman where it says he fell in love with her. Her name was Delilah, okay? So he had already opened that door yes. before his encounter with Delilah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so you want me to finish? Uh, read. Uh, read verses um six. Okay. We go down to six. Yep. Hold up. Okay, so Delilah said to Samson, please tell me where your great strength lies. Listen, brothers. <laughs> so 
So Delilah said to Samson, please tell me where your great strength lies and with what you may be bound to afflict you. All right. All right. This woman is trying to find out his secret. His weakness. His weakness. You know, it's, see, we're, I mentioned something, right? There's there's something that's known as like, you know, a spirit of Delilah, right? You know, you got the spirit of Jezebel and the spirit of Delilah, where once the woman who's operating that spirit discovers the man's weakness, you know, they'll try to, whether directly or indirectly, to cut off um, whatever is giving that person strength. What am I saying in this? What, what am I saying? One, one instance, your prayer life, Amen. all right? Let's say there's a, a, a woman you may hook up with, you know, knows you're, you're praying a lot, this and that, right? Your prayer life is your strength, right? And she may be lukewarm, right? The devil maybe will, will use her, right? And then start saying, man, you're praying a lot. Why don't you spend more time with me? But Amen. that's a cunning tactic to get you to stop praying. Amen. Because that's your strength. All right. I'm telling you something deep. All right. This this stuff is deep. It's symbolic. Right. That spirit wants to know where your strength is coming from. Or if you spend a lot of time with God. Yes. Oh, come with me here. Come with me here. Then she becomes a distraction. Yes. Yep. That's right. And not only for the man, same thing with the woman. Women, yeah. Same women with the woman too. too yes. You know, like same the woman too. So let's go back to the story now, right? We're we're gonna we're gonna go down to verses. All right, let's go to verses three from thirteen. All. All right, cool. So let's read um. Verses seventeen. All the way through. Twenty one. Oh, 17 and twenty one. Yep. Okay. That he told her all his heart and said to her. No razor has ever come upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If I am shaven, then my strength will leave me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. When Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up once more, for he has told me all his heart. So the Lord told him to sleep on her knees and, and called for a man and had him shave off the seven locks of his head. Then she began to torment him and his strength left him. And she said, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. So he awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out as before at other times and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had departed from him. Then the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza. They bound him with bronze fetters and he began he became a grinder in the prison. All right. She set him up. All right. Now you see <laughs> you see what happened now, right? This we can look at it symbolic as well, right? You see, once he gave in to that, verse 21 says the Philistines seized him, gouged out his eyes, took him down, binding him with bronze shackles, then set him to grind grain in the prison became a prisoner. This is all symbolic of what it lust is. will do to you if yes. you engage in that stuff. One, you become spiritually blind. Blind, yes. You become spiritually blind. Let's say that. You become bound. Bound. You That's lose right. your spiritual strength. strength. There you go. You become bound like a prisoner if you keep engaging in that stuff. That's what it does. And That's, also the Lord departed from him. Yes. <clears throat> That's what it does. You know, yeah. and, the, and the Lord, the Lord is your strength. You see, that's that's what it does. So you have no strength now to overcome your spiritual enemies. The Philistines were were, were their enemies. He he couldn't overcome them. His strength left. They bound him, made him blind. That's what's gonna happen. Yes. You, you, you engage in this sexual morality stuff, you're gonna lose your spiritual strength. Mm -hmm. Your spiritual enemy is gonna bound you. You're gonna be spiritually blind. You can't even see spiritually. You're gonna even you, your your dreams from God are gonna decrease and cease. I'm telling you, they are. You're going to just start having dreams for the enemy. He's he raping you in your dreams. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. That's what it is. That's how dangerous it is. Yes. So don't let, you know, um, for the brothers and the sisters too, these people with these lust fears, don't let them know like your weakness. You know, mm -hmm. first of all, you shouldn't be entertained in that spirit. But Samson, he had a problem with, you know, lust, you know, and all she needed, she needed to open door. She needed to know his weakness. And he told her, you know, so once a person is um, dealing with lust, like I said, the guy my job you know he would say flirtatious things to like it was subtle though it wasn't like really outward like that but i picked up one and i and i drew the boundary once someone see 
how far they can go with you, you know, that's the open door if you entertain that. So I'm going to share this last scripture, right? This last scripture, Proverbs 5, you know, you know, this warns against um, this. This passage warns against, you know, adultery. Mm -hmm. But this is just a passage we should just take heed to, period, you know, because it's important. All right. It's very important. Especially, you know, with, um, you know, the opposite sex, you know, learn you, tempting you to commit sin, you know. All right. So What's the Proverbs? Proverbs chapter five. Right. I'm going to share the screen real quick. 20 to 23. All right. Yeah. Let's read 20. That's what it is. Or 22. No, I'm going to, I'm going to start from verses one first. I'm going to start from verses one. All right. Um, all right. So hopefully everybody can see this, right? Yep. Screen being shared. All right. It's going to take time a little. All right. So I'm coming from Proverbs chapter five. And it says, My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Turn your ear to my words of insight that you may. Maintain discretion. Your lips may preserve knowledge. For the lips of an adulterous woman, all right, in other words, a strange woman, drips honey, all right? It sounds sweet. And her speech is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is bitter as gall and sharp as a double-edged sword. Her feet, her steps lead straight to the grave. She gives no thought to the way of life. Her paths wander aimlessly, but she does not know it. Now then, my sons, listen to me. Do not turn aside from what I say. Keep to a path far from her, do not do not go near the door of her house. All right, now listen. Lest you lose your honor to others, and your dignity to one who is cruel. Lest your strangers feast on your wealth and your toil enrich the house of another. At the end of your life, you will groan when your flesh and body is spent. You will say how I hated discipline, how my heart spurned correction. I would not obey my teachers or turn my ears to instructors. And as soon, I was soon in serious trouble in the assembly of God's people, all right? So this is a warning, right, about the strange woman, the adulterous woman, you know. Don't go near her, all right? And I'm bringing this passage because we have to also expand on this, right? There's people out there, you know, opposite sex, sex let's, let's use like a woman, for instance, right? She's ungodly, you know, but she's very lustful. She's out in the streets, this man and that man, all right? She looks good. And she comes to you, all right? Stay away from that. Because remember, we, we talked about the lust of the eyes. Mm -hmm. She may look good, you know, but you don't know what's behind it. Same exactly. thing with the women. You know, mm -hmm. he may look handsome. You don't know what's behind that. All right. There's a lot of lot of men, especially men that gotten themselves in certain situations because they hooked up with the wrong person, looked up with somebody that may look good. And now they have all this drama years later, Amen. all this drama, you know, they, they, they working. But their money going to not her, but the next man that she's with. That's what this Bible is telling us. Unless your strangers have your wealth. You see? This is why we gotta we have to be on guard with lust. We have to be on guard with this. Yes. And um, you know, a lot of times too, we can miss it as believers because we don't expect these things in ministries or churches that we may attend. But lust is a very, very bad thing that a lot of people in ministries and churches deal with as well. So when we say ungodly, that just means someone, like we said, that is not really committed to God. They're kind of, um, I don't know, kind of lukewarm, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So um, um, if there's a, like people in church, like sometimes they can use, um, you know, men. I'm saying I'm going to speak, you know, for men experiences I had. Well, let's go. Uh, let's go pass out Bible tracts together. Does that sound good? That's, does that sound like a godly thing to do? Yes. But his motive was he had a lust spirit. I mean, a lot of men in church have lust spirit, you know, women too, you know, but they'll use um, something, you know, of the church or something, the ministry to pull you in. So mm -hmm. be, be mindful of that as well. Don't go trusting people just because they're a part of a ministry. You have to test the fruit of people, you know, just, just be very, very wise when it comes to death. If you, if a, somebody show you the fruit of lust, be very, very mindful of that. Be very mindful of that. Yes, yes, definitely. You know, these are keys, you know. Yes. So as we as we stated, you know, to actually combat against this, you know, obviously, you know, as we mentioned, prayer and fasting, mm -hmm. right? And as as we said, you know, in regards to you know, sexual lust, sexual temptation, you know, 
resisting, you know, casting down is one thing, but flee from it. Just yeah. get yourself out of that situation. Just we gave you an example of Joseph. What happened? You know, he got himself out of that situation, right? Samson, he went to the situation and you saw how he felt, right? Don't think you're strong enough to combat this. Amen. Don't, all right? Don't. That's why the Bible says flee from sexual morality. There is no other type of, you know, sin um, or desire where it tells you to flee from, you know. Sexual morality, the only way it says to flee from. It doesn't say flee from gluttony. It doesn't say flee from covetousness. See, it doesn't, it doesn't say flee from, from anger and stuff like that. It may say abstain. You because know? with sex, it says you sin against your own body. Now yes. we inhouse the Holy Spirit. Yes. And when you have sex, it's a spiritual thing. Soul ties is real. That's it yes. talks about it in Corinthians. Yes. He says, should you become one with the harlot? That you know, that, that just means somebody that's you know sexually immoral or whatever. Mm -hmm. Could be man or woman. Yep. A man could be a, 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 a man whore, mm -hmm. a harlot. Yep. So we have the Holy Spirit. You can't be around here wild and sleeping around and stuff like that. And that's why God tells us to flee from it because internally is, is uh, detrimental. And also yes. you can have, it can uh, present um, outward things too as well. Sex is a, a, a very, very dangerous thing because, you know, when people that sleep around, they take on um, other people's spirits. Yes. You know, I know someone personally, um, an older woman, she was sleeping around, sleeping around. Now, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, she they diagnosed her with schizophrenia. I say it's demonic spirits because, you know, who knows who she was, you know, sleeping with. Yeah, and she didn't get it, like, you know, in her early years or, or whatever like that. She just wouldn't stop sleeping around. Then she ended up getting diagnosed with schizophrenia. We know that anybody that hear voices and stuff like that, the medical, you know, they say, well, it's just it's a, a mental thing, whatever, chemical imbalance. No, those are demon yes. spirits that people open themselves up to suicide is another one. Mm -hmm. You know, you can sleep with somebody that's, that has a um, spirit of suicide, whatever you're taking on all this stuff. That's why God's word is just so much wisdom in his word. He's not trying to, how the world say, take away front fun from you, not getting your pleasure. He's mm -hmm. protecting you because it's so much seriousness and detrimental effects to spiritual sex. Yes. To having sex is a spiritual thing, you know, um, becoming one with the person you don't know you don't know what they're dealing with battling with sex is a very very spiritual thing very spiritual so um that's why god tells us to flee from it you know stay you know just keep yourself from it you know if you're not married you know just be celibate to god send you someone if that's your heart desire you know i know it's hard sometimes for people you know especially but like i said you have to fall in love with God. You know, he has to be the one that, you know, first, you know, don't idolize the relationship, this and that. And that's another trap too. you idolizing being with somebody, filling a void that only Jesus Christ can fill. That is another open doorway as well, because you're looking for someone to fill a void. And then you have these um, passions that, you know, you can't control. Paul does says it's better to marry than burn. That's true. But maybe it's some things that God is trying to work on you until that time, you know, maybe you, you can't go, See, marriage doesn't um, stop lust. If you're battling right. with lust, that's not going to be the cure for it. You know, just because you get married, you have to deal. With, you have to let God deal with those things before you get married. Mm -hmm. You know, that's right. And then just have that passion for your um, your spouse. You know, and if you're dating, you know, just be wise. You know, don't put yourself like we said in situations to where you're. You know, you're going to fall. You know, use wisdom. That's it. You know, like I said, the enemy try to make it like it's hard, like you can't do it. You can do it. Mm -hmm. You know, and the first thing should be, how does this please God? That should be everybody's when 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 the enemy try to tempt you with um, sexual sin, perversion, whatever it is. How would this please God? Because you're going to reap the consequences of whatever that is that you give into your flesh. Condemnation is going to come and other things may come too. Mm -hmm. you know. So just just flee, avoid it avoid at it. all costs. Flee, definitely. So, you know this this is it that we have. You know we definitely you know we we, we pray that you know you all take heed to this. Those who are listening now, oh, those who are going to yeah, listen in the uh, future. We didn't go into the open doors. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So to sum it up. All right. To sum it up. Yes, the open doors. You want to read it? Okay. Um. Yes. So we know in the Bible, the Bible talks about lasciviousness. Lasciviousness is um like it's it's tied to lust as well. Lasciviousness is um what you say? Okay, I'm I'm a, um touch on that. We said lasciviousness is, is is like okay. Let's say lust is like a um 
how you want to say like a tree right and it has different branches fornication adultery homosexuality bestiality incest lasciviousness is any time a lot what you know goes on like my husband said on social media women showing their bodies their shapes to get men to lust that is a sin before god yes now people like to touch on the obvious sins in galatians we didn't read galatians i don't know if you want to touch on that before we close out but um, the obvious sins that will you will not inherit the kingdom of God. You will also not inherit the kingdom of God if you're presenting yourself in a sexual way. Mm-hmm. It could be subtle. It can be outward. Some people outward, they don't care. But if you know you're putting on something tight fitted to show your body, it's the motive behind it. Remember, we serve a God that tests the heart. He knows the heart. He knows the intentions of man's heart. Mm-hmm. So when you put that outfit on or a brother, you know, putting something on to, you know, get women lust. That is called lasciviousness, and that is tied to lust. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if any, you never knew what lascivious meant. Now, the open doors to lust: uh, pornography, sexual images. It could also be generational as well. Yes, lusting. You know, you see somebody that's attractive. You don't. I mean, yeah, yeah. Look, we're gonna see people that's attractive, but you cast it once your mind start going to men. Mm-hmm. I wonder how it will be with uh, him. Or I want uh, brothers. I wonder how it would be with her. Oh, look at that. Look at that. No, no, no. Once you start opening that door and don't cast down those thoughts, mm-hmm. that can open the door to that that being attacked. Also with um sexual dreams as well. Yes. Because a lot of times when you lust, the Bible says, which much activity comes dreams. You lusting throughout the day. Say you're constantly looking at women, you're not casting those thoughts down. You're going to get attacked with a sexual dream. It may not be that night, but eventually you may get attacked with sexual dreams. Mm-hmm. Incubus is succubus, okay? Certain attire, like I said, you know, fitted attire, you know, things that's showing your body. You want people to lust. When you put those clothes on, and you, your whole motive is you want people to look at you and lust after you. Men, or you know, uh, want women, you know, they, they wear certain things. Or women put on certain attire. They want men to look at their body. Sexual morality, fornication, adultery, as I said, bestiality, incest, and homosexuality. Those are also open doors. Um, and like I said, lust is never satisfied. It's like a um, never-ending pit. So, you know, men that, that that deal with that spirit of lust and, you know, women are, are constantly trying to appease these men by getting, you know, a lot of women now, like we talked about in a, another video, doing these operations to get attention from these certain men. Listen. I don't care how big you get your booty, your breasts, or whatever. If he has a spirit of lust, he's gonna go to the next thing. Go, go once he gets tired of looking at you, it's like somebody that constantly get their favorite cake, right? They're gonna get tired eventually of always having that cake. They're gonna want to try something different. Oh, I don't like cake, I don't like chocolate cake now. I'm gonna go try uh cheesecake. That's how lust is, it's never satisfied, Mm -hmm. okay? So it's a never-ending pit. Don't try to, you know, do things to appease a, a person. Well, I'm talking to, talking to women that that struggle with this. You know, getting, uh, changing your appearance, getting all this stuff done to your body and stuff like that, just to satisfy someone lust. No, that is wrong. Mm-hmm. You know. And then movies and music. Okay, that's the open door as well. If you're listening to, um, watching certain movies, especially if you're single or stuff like that. Yes with sexual that's going to make that's going to make you feel some type of way so just don't don't watch it you know or listen to music that's talking about sex or have some type of um you know lustful uh lyrics or whatever don't don't uh listen to that a molestation is another open door people that have been molested a lot of times they become very very lustful and promiscuous yes so that is it i don't know if you want to touch on any of that that's deep especially when you mention uh molestation you know that Mm -hmm. that's deep you know when um that happens especially you know if you haven't seen when you're young mm-hmm. you know that mm-hmm. does tie into a lot of you know sexual pr- promiscuity you know as you get older and stuff not only that you know even homosexuality if you're if you were a, a boy you know blessed by a man you know that's an open door to those things as well yeah yeah you know and uh andy said that's andy right yes because he don't have his name up he said yes no this one yes you are correct minister keisha the lord has set me free and i see working through my marriage amen Amen. you know because you know andy you're you're a man and i know you know women like they like some women they just don't care they throw themselves they see an attractive man and they just want to like just try to get you to look try to get you to lust like i said you marry it's not going to and actually it gets worse like i told my husband it gets worse you know we told the story about us in the gym and how women try to get his attention and stuff like that 
It's insecure. A lot of these women are insecure. They're looking for something. Men, a lot of them are insecure. They need that attention. They need that validation. And, mm -hmm. you know, all it is is the enemy using them to try to get you to fall. Mm -hmm. So that's right, Andy. Yep. Yep. Let, let God, your foundation is uh, God. What God put uh, together, let no man put asunder. Put Nothing can't come in between that. No yes. no sexual lust, no whatever. Somebody try to come in between what God put together, yeah. it's not going to work. Yeah. It's going to come to naught. Come to naught. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, you know, as you mentioned, I'm going to read Galatians 5, 19 real quick. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, oh, idolatry, good. witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. I mean, there's a whole lot more of the which I tell you before, as I also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom, the kingdom of God. God. Now that shit could evict anybody. Yep, you because know, that's, yeah, that, that's, that's the flesh. Yeah, that's the flesh. Is the works of the flesh. Yep. And also, I wanted to say that lust is a lot of people that are in their graves right now behind lust. That is a good because point. Um, lust, like I said, think about a, a tree, and it has different uh, branches, right? People, a lot of times, when they have lust that's not controlled, they begin to co covet. Then they become obsessive over a person, right? A lot of people, women have been murdered because, you know, maybe they're, um, I know, what is that, Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, OnlyFans, whatever yes. that yep. stuff. You know, a lot of women have come up murdered and killed. They meet up with these guys yep. and then they're, they're dead. Boy. You're kidnapped and killed because a lot of these men that get online, they, they deal with lust and it's, it's, they don't have any self-control. Mm -hmm. Maybe the woman did try to deny him. She just wanted to meet up to go eat and have a date. But they, you know, men, they, they want the sex. Yeah. So if it's not controlled, like if you, lust, like I said, it, it, you, it's like a deep ending pit. It can go, people can get murdered. People can, a lot of things can happen if they don't have their lust. People have been raped behind lust. A lot of things, a lot of things. Like um, it's, it's a very, it's, it's so many branches to it. It's very dangerous. Homosexuality, um, maybe at first a uh, man, you know, he used to sleep around with a lot of women. I've heard of this too sleep around with a lot of women that, that that didn't satisfy him no more he wanted to try something different mm -hmm. so now he started messing with men same thing women it could be as well yep yeah and that's what they're teaching the mm -hmm. you continue to move on to the next yep. yep to increase sexual morality increase that stuff you know and things happen diseases on you know pregnancies Pregnancy, you know I'm with you. yeah things like that you know and i like how you mentioned you know, basically, yeah, people are in their early grades because of lust. You even yeah. have men killing other men because of a woman. Yes, oh yes, Killing that too. Yeah, that stuff killing, women, kill, killing uh, over men. Yeah, women fighting over men. I mean, yeah. it's just it's just ridiculous. And this the story we read about Samson, he mm -hmm. early he wasn't supposed to go out there like that. No, no, his 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 task ended early because of lust because of the woman. What he did, you know, if he would have got out of that situation, he would have pro prolonged his prolonged, his, yeah. his, his his um. Destiny, Destiny. Right. you know, but because of lust, he got taken out early, you know. So, yeah, it's true, it's absolutely true, you know. That's why the devil uses that strategy, that's why he uses it, you know. So, there's not there's nothing else, you know. I pray that this has um you know blessed you all, and that um, you know, you take heed to this, you know, as as we said to um, you know, prayer, fasting help mm -hmm. break that flesh. Fasting, yeah. As we said, you know, regards to sexual morality. Flee from it. Get yourself out of those situations. Don't mm -hmm. try to say, I'm strong enough. I ain't going to fall. Don't fool yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't fool yourself. Be like Joseph. Get yourself out of that situation. The Bible tells us to flee sexual morality. So run away from it. All right. And, and don't engage in certain conversations as well. When a conversation goes left and, um, you know, start talking about, you know, sexual things and just try to avoid that because that's going to stir up passions as well yes yes so those are key mm -hmm. um definitely pray that this bless you that you all take heed to it you know because god desires us to grow mm -hmm. be sanctified you know and if you're not married you know pray for pray to god you know send you that spouse and he will and just be patient on that because the one who god has for you is going to be the one the right one for you Amen. all right so thanks everybody for joining um this concludes tonight's teaching and you all be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.